Okay, so let's summarize a little bit what, uh, what we learned so far. We started off, chap, uh, Tanya started off with, um, with what it says in the Talmud, that before a person is born, every, before the, the uh, right immediately before the person is born, Hashem has the Neshama take an oath. And that oath has three parts to it, okay? The first part is to be a tzaddik, to, to, to strive to be righteous, which seems to be a very positive thing. You should, we should have big goals. We should have, um, um, we should have, um, we should, we should, uh, not, we should have great uh, uh, estimations of what, of the, of the heights that we could reach. And then the second part of the, of the of the oath is don't be a Russia. Be so, when you hear when, when, and that doesn't make so much sense because it seems that we it's repetitive. Be a tzaddik, be righteous, and don't be a Russia. Don't be wicked. It's repetitive. So that we need to clarify, and we need to clarify what is righteous. What what do we mean by righteous? What do we mean by wicked? And then the last part is that even if everyone tells you that you're righteous. You should always consider yourself wicked. So, first of all, it doesn't make sense. No, but first of all, if, if everyone tells you that you're righteous, it means that you look righteous. That means in your behavior, you're righteous. You're really very, um, very um, committed. You're, um, you're fulfilling all the mitzvot, all the commandments, and that's why people are thinking that you're righteous. And you should still think that you're wicked. So, Besides the fact that logic doesn't make sense, like why, why shouldn't you, if people tell you you're righteous, why should you still think that you're wicked? But besides that, we said, first of all, it seems that it's contradicting what it says in Perkei Avot. It says over there that a person should not, don't think that you're righteous in your own eyes. But then we, think, we said also it's not going gonna, gonna to be a contradiction to one of the two foundations of Judaism, which is simcha, joy, and responsibility. Okay? The first thing, the 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 the, um, the 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 first thing that it, this may affect is your is your feeling of joy. If a pers- if someone tells you that, um, uh, uh, we said that one of the most important thing is to have self good self image. If you always think that that if you think of yourself that you're wicked, and no matter what you're gonna do, you're gonna stay that way for the rest of your life. So it's a very bad self image that will make you very depressed, very unhappy, and how. Could that fit with the importance of serving Hashem B'Simcha, which is a very fundamental thing in, 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 in Judaism, to be happy, to, to be happy with the service of God? How are you going to be happy? You're you're if you're not going to be motivated at all to because you think no matter what I'm going to stay wicked. So why you're going to be motivated to do anything? Because anyway, it's going to stay there. And even if you're going to end up doing something, you won't, you won't do it with any excitement. You just do it because, you know, like they used to say, it's hard to be a Jew, i got to do it, you know. So, and if you're going to make the impossible and say, I'll still be happy, I won't pay attention to the fact that I'm always wicked, that's also bad. Because if you don't care about being wicked, it becomes a point that you don't care about sinning. And then you're, you won't be responsible, you won't take it seriously anymore. And that's also not not good because we know that in Judaism we have to realize um, that every every action that we do makes a big difference not only for ourselves for the whole world like we like we spoke about the other time like you mentioned about the scale that, that so it's very important to to be very accountable for what we're doing so it's not going to work okay so this is what we this is how we started off and then we started to to introduce what it says in the Talmud about that five levels. Two levels in a, in a tzaddik, two levels in a rasha, and a bin intermediary. So, first of all, we want to understand what does it mean to be intermediary? We're going to try to figure that one out. And also, what does it mean to be righteous, to be wicked? Is it something internal, like what's going on within yourself? Or is it something about your behavior? That you, uh, about, about the way things are in your... Um, yeah, or is it about your behavior? And also another another question when it says tovlo oralo, good to you and bad to you, is it talking about your inclination or is it talking about your um, the, the way things are in your life, like the way 
life treats you. So at first we brought the Pshat in the Gemara that it's talking about how life is treating you. So if life is good for you or not good for you, and that depends. We said for a righteous man, usually if life is good for him, it means he's perfect. If life is not good for him, it means that he has some kind of, of negative that he has to uh, that he has to cleanse. And for weak, it's the opposite. Okay, that was the Pshat. That was a simple understanding. And then we went deeper. And we said that we're really talking about something more internal. We're talking about whether you're... And, and we're, trying to, we're starting to say, we're starting to learn, we started to learn last, last week, that when we say righteous, it's not just about your behavior, that you're righteous. We're talking about... Oh, hi. When we say... Um, basically... This is what we're going to start off today with this, with, with, with this uh, understanding. That there is two areas that are important in one's life. One is the external and one is the internal. <coughs> one important thing... Hi. Welcome. Um, so, and there is two, um, two important thing, things to focus on in our lives as, as Jewish people. One is what's going on within ourselves, and one is our, about our behavior, right? So, we know, we already discussed that behavior means three parts, which is thought, speech, and action. That's where, when we learn Shulchan Aruch, we understand this is the most important thing as, as being a Jew means that my actions have to fit with the Torah, okay? Our speech, the way we talk, and of course it could mean Lashon, not to speak Lashonar, it means to speak words of Torah, to speak positive, etc., etc., and thoughts. Even thoughts are important in Judaism. We have, we're not allowed to think um, certain thoughts, and inappropriate thoughts or impure thoughts, and, and so on. And we, like Avodah Zarah is a thought that we cannot think, etc. So also thought, speech, and action are important. So this is the way we understand Judaism. But then we know that there's another aspect in Judaism, which is more internal. And this is actually a mitzvah that we say every day, Hashem elokecha, Love Hashem, your, your God, with your hearts. It's plural, levavcha, and not libcha. So the Gemara says in brachas, it means to love Hashem also with your heart, with it, your, your other inclination, your negative inclination. This is what we're going to discuss later. What does it mean negative? What does it mean positive? Etc. What's ra? What's tov? But, but we do understand that there's a mitzvah to love Hashem, and this is something more internal. It's not, and, and, and like the Rambam writes, we discussed la, uh, two classes ago, that in order to get feelings in the heart, it starts with the brain, it starts with certain meditations. So this is already my inside, what I'm thinking, what I'm meditating on, what I'm, and meditation, understanding means not just a thought, it means like a real connection with ideas, like really to think about it, and like we're going to learn later in Paragimel, that's the level of dot to really connect with logic, uh, with, with ideas like what we're trying to do every day when we're praying, when we do the davening, we're trying to think about the greatness of Hashem and connect with them and to arouse emotions to desire to be close to Hashem. So this is already a whole different world than the world of action, of machshavat dibur maaseh, thought, speech, and action. And they're both equally important. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. The most important, obviously, the, our external behavior, because we are in Olam HaMaseh, the world of action. But at the same time, we have to realize that, that it's so important to have also internal connection to Hashem, to the extent when the Baal Shem Tov came, he said that if someone does a mitzvah without feelings, it's like a body without a soul. So this, this was the, one of the great big statements of Hasidut, to emphasize the importance of, of bringing life into the mitzvah, to have feelings in the mitzvah. It's like bringing a soul into a mitzvah. And this is also hinted in the word, in what we say in Perkevot, and probably in many other areas in, in, in Talmud, ma'asim tovim. What does it mean ma'asim tovim? We could just say Torah and ma'asim. Torah is learning, ma'asim is action. What's tovim? So, so I'm not sure if it's from the Baal Shem Tov, but it's written in Hasidut, that tovim is like in the Hebrew, when we say precious stone, we call avanim tovot. There's avanim, there's just stones. There's avanim tovot, precious stones that are shiny stones. So the word tov, and actually we're going to, that's actually interesting because it's connected to what, what we're going to learn in Hasidut, what Tov means. 
we, we're reading this parsha of a Moshe Rabbeinu being born, and then it says, Vatera to Kitovu, she saw that he was good. And the Chazal say, what do you mean that he was good? That they bite Nitmalea, bite Kulo Ora, that the house was filled with light. So also, Vayar Hashem um, Metaor, what's the word? Kitov. So we, we, learned, we learned, that's how we learn, that's how the Gemara learns it out. But Tov and, and Or comes together. So in, so in other words, we, 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 we won't get there today, but probably next class, that in, in, the, in the eyes of Kabbalah, Tov means a place where there is Or, where there is a revelation of God, where, where God's, um, God's um, presence is, is, is felt. And, and Ra means a place where um, God is hidden, and that's called already klipa, a shell, where God is, is, is hidden, and it's more your ego. And your ego is basically um, making your, yourself the center of everything and not God. So this is um, the idea of Or, of Tov. This is the idea of Tov. Um, I'm getting lost over here. Um, what was I saying before? Um, anyone could remind me? Oh, uh, oh so... so, so um, so we were talking about the importance of um, of our internal, right? That that we should be connecting to Hashem not only in our in our external, not only in our thought, speech, and action, also in our um, in our, um, in, our, in our in our in our inner self. So now this is what basically we define um, what a tzaddik is, what a benoni is, what a rasha is. So what I'm telling you right now, really, if you learn Tanya, you only find this out much later. But I think um, for us, it's important to get the general idea where we're going, so then everything will fall into place. So the way the Alter Rebbe explains it, and, and he's going to prove everything, that a tzaddik is somebody, a righteous person, is only someone who is not only... A tzaddik is obviously somebody who is an external behavior, is a tzaddik. That means his thought and action, uh, th- thought, speech, and action are perfect. But a tzaddik is also someone who is internally perfect. That means that he only has yetzer tov. That means that he only has desire for Hashem, and he has absolutely no ego. How, how are thoughts external? Uh, it, it, thoughts, thoughts compare right. Thoughts compared to your speech and action are external, but compared to your inner self are, exter- uh, are external. And the way we could, we could judge if something is external or internal, it, generally in chapter 4, the Alter defines external as garments. What is a garment? A garment is external. Except that's why you could just change your garments all the time. The fact that you could change your thoughts, and you have, you have you, 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 the thought is more internal, and the way to prove it is that speech and action, you could start, you could stop them completely. You could stop talking, you could stop doing. But thought you can't stop. So that shows that thought is more internal, and that's why you can't stop but, but what you could do is change your thoughts, and you have 100% control of, of changing your thoughts, which just shows that something external. But your inner self, you can't con- change as, easy, as easily. Like if you desire something or love someone or something, you can't just change it overnight. You have to work hard to change it, or your intellect. Your intellect and emotion are more internal. It's more, um, it's something that is um, more of your, of, your, of your inner self, of your, of your character. And you thought, which in action, they, 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 um, a garment is you, it's usually your natural way of talking and speaking and thinking is going to be um, a um, expression of your inside, but you, have, you could change it. And this is the idea of a garment, like you could have a poor man wearing garments of, of, a, of a wealthy man, and a wealthy man wearing uh, garments, so you, you could be inside. Um, in, in a very, uh, like you could have very, uh, you could be very negative, um, you could have very bad, um, bad and negative feelings inside, and yet to make yourself be involved in very positive mitzvah or learning Torah, so you're able to, the, your garments could change, could, and that's what, what defines garments, what it defines external. But of course thought compared to speech and action is more internal. So when we say internal, it's really more of your character, to really start loving Hashem. So a tzaddik is somebody who got, is good in both, in a, external and internal. Now, we do understand that tzaddik could have a, there's many levels of tzaddikim, and there's some tzaddikim who have a small yetzahara, a little bigger, but, but they, they, it's like they, don't, they have full control over it. It's nullified. 
Okay, that's what we call tzaddik viralo. That the negative side of them, they, they may have a small yitzar because to be a hundred percent tzaddik, a hundred percent yitzar tov, that's very few tzaddikim. We're going to get to it hopefully today. That very few tzaddikim have reached that level that they have absolutely no yitzar But uh, there is a, many tzaddikim, which I mean, even to be a, 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 a tzaddik that that has full control of his yitzar is also a very high level. But there is more of those. They still have a yitzhar, but yitzhar is like a sleep. It's not really activated. It doesn't, so they don't really feel the yitzhar as much, even though he could wake up any day. So they have to be careful. Okay, so that's a tzaddik. A rasha is someone who is, uh, who is, who is lacking in both. That means that he, not only he has a yitzhar, but also from time to time he may sin. And if we understand what a rasha is, we understand that, unfortunately, we're all in that category because no one could say, I'm perfect, I never do anything wrong. Okay, and we're going to see today, Mertz Hashem, that this is also according to halacha. Um, now, a benoni, what's a ben intermediary, according to the Tanya? A intermediary, according to Tanya, means that he is halfway like a tzaddik, halfway like a rasha. In, in, the, in his external behavior, he's like a tzaddik. He never sins. That's why he's called it. Uh, but uh, but 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 he has a yitzhahara is inclination like a rasha, so he's in the middle because he's in a, he's halfway like a tzaddik like a righteous halfway like a wicked. So okay, so this is the way basically. Now we understand what's the oath. Hashem says to eat tzaddik, which means we have to strive to reach the level of a tzaddik, which means we have to. This is telling us. To, to, that we, we, we should try, we shouldn't be satisfied just with following the Shulchan Aruch and, and making sure that externally we're not wicked and we're, we have, we have the obligation before the, the Gemara Nida says, before Neshama comes to this world, there is three promises and we learned in, yeah, last week that these promises basically means that Hashem is giving the Neshama strength, the word Shavua is from the word Sova, satisfaction, that Hashem is giving us strength to be able to fulfill each of the three parts. And the first one is to strive to be a tzaddik, which means not to be satisfied just with um, having, um, following the Shulchan Aruch and being righteous in everyone's eyes, to also be righteous inside, which means to try to work on our, on, on our, on our feelings, on our, on, on, on our heart, on our, moach, avodat moach ve'alev, on our brain and our heart, to reach a level of love for Hashem, which is, um, and we try to work on it. So we may not be able to reach the highest level, but some try all your life. You have to strive to get there. Work on it all the time, and don't pay attention whether I got there or not. Always work on it. And that's what we do every day when we do during the tefillah. And this is the main re- reason why we daven to working on on our inner self. Then we have the second part of the of the of the oath: Al Tehi Rasha. Even if you don't reach to be a tzaddik, at least try not to be a rasha. At least be a benoni. At least. Even if you don't get to 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 transform your 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 yourself within, at least without, you should try not to be a rasha, which means to try to control every moment of your life to follow the Torah. So that we understand why it's not really repetitive because it's talking about two different things. And then it tells you that vafilu kolam kula. The last part of the promise is very interesting. That even if everyone tells you you're a tzaddik because they're judging you by your external look, they see that you're you're really, every moment of your life is very focused and very meaningful, and they assume you're a tzaddik, and they tell you you're a tzaddik. And you may think that they might be right, and he tells you no. You should still think that Eye benecha kerasha. What does it mean, Eye benecha kerasha? Don't say Eye benecha rasha. Don't say think that you are rasha. Think that you are like a rasha. Think that you are that, com- that comparison that the Benoni has to rasha. And that is the Yetzirah. It's very dangerous for someone who has a Yetzirah, who has an e- evil inclination or negative inclination, or has ego, to think that he doesn't have. Because um, we could assume, we could, we could imagine what happens to somebody who thinks that everything they, they desire is, is holy. And they still have ego, and really it's not holy. So a righteous man... So a person always has to be careful, and I think we share this story, maybe not. There's a story which is, I think, very connected to this. The story with, uh, uh, with Rabbi, uh, I think, Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl. 
definitely happened with the Chernobyl Rebbe, I think it was Rabbi Nachman Chernobyl. So, um, one time, someone came to, he, he sees people every day for Yechidut, for private audience, giving people advice and, 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 um, and uh, strengthening. And one person, after he saw the Rav, it was, uh, he, uh, he, was, he had a little bit of money, he left 300 ruble for donation. So the, the, the people in the house were so excited because the, the rabbi was living in great poverty. They thought they were going to be able to start paying all the bills. But obviously the rabbi had different ideas in his head. But anyways, this, right after he, this man gave a donation, the next person who came to see the rabbi was very poor and he had a daughter who needed to get married and he needed money to marry her off. And he asked, um, he asked him, how much money do you need? He said, we need 300 rubles. And that's exactly the amount of money he just got. So he thought, great, it's from Hashem. Now I could help this man to, get, to marry off his daughter. What a mitzvah. And, he, and as he was about to give that money, he started thinking, one second, is it right? There is a big community here, and there's a lot of families who need money. Maybe I should, I should divide it. I should, I should give everybody. I should give him a sum, I give others some. It's not right to give everything to one person. And then he... He, he thought, he looked more into himself, and he, he thought to himself, one second, which thought came from, my, from the Yetzer Tov, <laughs> which one came from the Yetzer and, and he realized that it, it seemed to him that he was about to do a great mitzvah. And, and then the Yetzer comes in a tricky way and tries to try to convince you, oh, well, well, it might be a better idea to, say, to help so many families. <laughs> and he realized that he should give the money and he gave the money. So this is an example of, 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 of the importance of, of knowing yourself. Like you think, I'm, if you think that you, I'm, I'm not saying if the letter was righteous or not righteous, I'm just saying the idea that sometimes if a person thinks I'm perfect and everything I want is holy, and really it may be not. So it's important to know who you are and that's, what the, that's, the, that's the meaning of the last part of the oath. That if, even if everyone, based on your behavior, thinks you're righteous and you're perfect, you should always doubt it. You may not know yourself, like the story we mentioned last week of Rabba, who said, I might be a Benoni, which means this exactly what it said in the oath. He said, I might be a, like a Russia, that I'm, I'm a Benoni that has a Yitzhara, and I, and I need to know that. So if I wake up in the morning and I want something, I have to rethink if it's where it's coming from. But a tzaddik who really is like, is no, already on a different level, he doesn't have to worry that it's, uh, it's, it may be a sin. So, so, so we're saying that when he says, when the mission says, or says Kirasha, Kirasha. that means if you're really a tzaddik, yeah, you think of yourself as a banner. Yeah, unless you know. I don't know how. You know what? You're Russia. You know, unless you know you're a tzaddik. Uh-huh. But we said that it's very tricky because even someone who is, who, who, whenever someone is really, uh, uh, who is really involved in Torah and tefillah whole day like Rabba was, he was the God of Lador, so he has no way to tell if, if he has Yitzhar or not. Because when you're involved in holy things, you don't feel Yitzhar. So that's why he wasn't sure. But maybe, isn't it just a, I'm gonna, isn't it just like a psychological play? Meaning, you, you're really a, a tzaddik, you know you're a tzaddik, but God tells you, don't get too full of yourself, because you can slip. So think of yourself, Russia, yeah, yeah. as a thing on me. Yeah, like, look, look, there's another point of what said Pirkei Alves, that never trust yourself. So that's another point. But, but yeah, it's something else. Yeah, sorry. Can, uh, can a Benoni also be somebody with uh, good thoughts and not good actions? You said the other way around. Right, somebody who has bad thoughts but does good things on the outside. But what if it's the opposite? Is that also considered? Uh, look, um, we said that, that we, we learned last week that a Russia, okay, what, what, in general, we switch status all the time. Because basically, I was going to see in a moment that when we are involved in, 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 in a sin, for that moment, we're called Russia. That's the, that's the halacha. But uh, when we're involved in a mitzvah, we may be called a benoni, maybe. 
but if we're really fully into it, like if we are holding, it's based on what where, where we are holding. In other words, what, what we feel at the time. Like on Yom Kippur, we're standing, we say, there's no way we ever can do anything wrong this year. We, a Benoni is not someone who is actively doing mitzvot, someone who is in his mind, there's no way I'm going to sin. Like I'm going to, um, the way he's standing now, you know he's not going to do anything wrong. So, um, so being a Russia, if a person is sinning and, and inside he doesn't want to be there, he's still called a Russia. It's called Russia Vitavlo. It, it, it's a good sign. It means that he, because unfortunately there is people who could sin and not even feel bad. But if you feel bad about it, that's a good sign. And that's what it says in the Gemara, we, we mentioned last week, that wicked people are full of regrets. And that's a good sign. It means that you're, if you feel bad, it's, 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 it means that your, your Yetzer Tov, your Neshama, is still revealed and you right away feel bad about it. Yeah. Okay. So, the last thing we discuss, now we're going to, the Alter Rebbe is going to try to prove it from different sources, this idea. The first thing that we discussed yesterday, which we already mentioned, the story of Rabbah, and the second thing we mentioned yesterday was the story with Eov, where Eov turned to God, and he said, God, you have no excuse to punish the wicked people, because you made them wicked. And we asked, what does that mean? And, and we, said, we said, on the other hand, we know that we have free choice. Okay? So, to, to, and the answer is, to have a free choice is... When it says in the Rambam that we could have free choice to be like Moshe Rabbeinu, not to be internally like Moshe Rabbeinu. We're talking about externally. So this is the, the, the way to, an, to understand a lot of pieces of Talmud. That, that you have to see what we're talking about, external or internal. We could all be like Moshe Rabbeinu externally in our thought, speech, and action because, um, because we have free choice and we have full control. So we, we could be righteous in our actions but not righteous inside. Righteous inside, that's not really in our hand. We may get, be lucky. If we work on it, we may get there. We might not for sure going to get there. Um, and basically, according to Hasid, this is what Korach was fighting about. Because according, in Korach's eyes, if the most important in, ta- in Torah is your behavior, and if we all, Kulam Kudoshim, everybody is holy, everybody is, is heard Hashem talking on Mount Sinai, and we, all, and we all do the same mitzvah. What, what makes Moshe Rabbeinu or Aaron greater than the rest of us? But we understand that it's not so. Now, Eov, he said, he, when he, what was he saying? How could, he knew that there is free choice. What does it mean when he says to God, you created the wicked? And God accepted his, 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 his argument. And all God says was, well, I gave him the Torah. The, with the Torah, they could have strength. They could have strength and fight their, their Yitzhahara. So basically, if we understand what we just learned, it makes 100% sense. What he's complaining about is, it's not fair that some people have the potential to become Tzadikim and to get rid of Yitzhahara. And some, no matter what they're going to do, their entire life, they're going to stay with the Yitzhahara. And, and we're going to learn on later on that when we, the more we mature, the more the, the Yitzhahara is like we just mentioned a moment ago, it's basically based on self-ego. And that ego only strengthens as, ta- as, as we continue living our lives. Even a Benoni, somebody who is always perfect in his behavior, his inclination is growing. Because, because, because this is based on physicality. The physicality is associated with ego. And the more you live a physical life, every time you have another, another meal, or you have another physical experience, it strengthens your physicality, which is your ego. So, so that, that's one of the things that the Alter Rebbe teaches us because it's important for people not to get depressed. Because I, for so many years, I am learning, I'm doing mitzvot, and yet I have crazy inclinations. So the Alter Rebbe teaches us that's, that's normal. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't uh, be surprised. And, and this, is, this is one of the big things that the author is going to talk about later, how this, to deal with this. But, um, um, but, um, what was I saying? Um, but Eov was, was trying to say that it's not fair that, that some people, no matter what they're going to do, they, they, they're always going to stay with those challenges. They're always going to have a Yetzirah. And that's what he said, Barat it's not right. 
how could you punish them? But Hashem says, you're right, you're right that, that it's very difficult for them, but I still gave them, gave them I, gave, I gave people the Torah, with the study of Torah, like, we, like the Gemara says, if the Yetzirah att- att- attacks you, just pull them into the Bet Midrash, into the house of study. So you could deal with the Yetzirah. There is a certain truth to his claim, that it's not fair, like there, there's chosen people who could become righteous, but this is the way it is. We don't, we don't understand God's ways. It's, that, it's, that, it's, like, a, it's like a gift. Um, what is the gift? What's the difference between a gift and when you, or a sale, when you sell something? When, when someone, when you are, when, if you're, uh, if you have a store or whatever, and you're selling a certain product, so if a person comes to you, let's say it costs $100, or 100 shekel, he gives you 100 shekel, you, you give it to him. So but by a sale, you're basically getting what you're paying for. But with a gift, it doesn't work that. A gift, someone pleased you, and he may have pleased you in something small, and you're going to give them a much bigger gift that is worth a lot more. So it's not basically, you're not really paying for what you're getting by a gift. Also, a gift is not guaranteed. You're not for sure, you're not, you're not going to give a gift to anybody who pleased you. Okay? But, um, if you decide to give him the gift, because give him or her the gift, um, you're basically giving them a lot more. So it says that to be a tzaddik is like a gift. What does it mean as a gift? You're not going to give a gift to someone who didn't please you. So a tzaddik is somebody who really pleased God with his behavior, which means that he was working on his inner self for could be a few years, many years, and eventually Hashem decides to give him that gift and take away his Yitzhar. And that's what happened with King David. We're going to, hopefully we're going to get to, there today. That he, um, after the sin with Bathsheba, he fasted and he worked hard, and he came to the point that he said, Belibi halal kiri in Tehillim. He says, my, my heart is hollow. I got rid of my Yitzhar. And he was able to reach there, Hashem, it was a gift, but it, it was through his effort. So, but ya- Yaakov gave a gift to Esau. Well, <laughs> it's true. So the point is that this is what, the, 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 what Eov complained about. He said, it's not right. Why is it that some people, they, they, uh, Hashem gives them that gift and some people will not? And some people always have to struggle with the Yitzhahara. Okay, now let's continue. Um, we're holding um, oh. Daf Hei. The odd, very good. The odd on the on the first page, the first page. It's on the bo- the small the small page is sm- on the bottom pages. It's number two. Seven We're continuing to to prove what is a benoni and what is a tzaddik and what is a rasha. The odd, and and then moreover, sheharei b'sha'asha osei avonot nikar shagamur. When a person commits a sin. He's considered 100% Russia, and, which, and, and, he, and such a person cannot be a witness. So, it's talking about, you know, unfortunately, in a way, you could say nobody could be a witness. But the question is, how does a person sin? We're talking about someone who does, commits a veira, commits a sin, intentionally. So, the, the way the Alter Rebbe writes it in Shulchan Aruch, he says, a sin that everybody knows is a sin. Like, if someone breaks Shabbos, everybody knows breaking Shabbos is a sin. But... Sometimes when people speak Lashon Hara, they never even realize they're saying Lashon Hara. They think, oh, I didn't do anything. So that's not necessarily going to make someone, even though it is a sin, certain things people do without realizing, but that would not make you invalid to be a witness. But things that everybody knows is a sin, if a person would do, it will make him a Russia. So what we're trying to say is, we're trying to figure out what makes someone to be intermediary, a Benoni. Because the moment you're sin, you already called it a Russia. And if a person already did shuva and he did nikrat tzadik amur, he becomes a complete tzadik. And that could take one second. There's a very powerful gemara that the Rebbe used to speak about many times to prove how a person could do shuva in one second. It says, the gemara talks about getting married or getting divorced and making a, com- a condition. And when someone makes a condition, so we know the way it works is a t'nai, right? So if the t'nai, if the condition works... It's okay. Like for example, if someone makes a makes a, a, make, gives a kiddushin, gives the ring to the to the woman, and he says, "I'm marrying you on the condition that I have a million dollars." And if he doesn't, if she, so then the the the, halacha, the, 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 the halacha is that depending if he has the money or not, if she's married or not. So here's the question: What happens if someone marries a woman on the condition that I am a tzaddik gamur, complete tzaddik? So the halacha is. That even if a moment ago he did the greatest, the biggest Avera, 
it's a questionable marriage. Safek Mekudeshet. Why? Because maybe in, the, in, in, in that second that he married her, he had a thought of tshuva, he had a thought that he wants to change his life completely, and he wants to be perfect, and then he turns to the status of Tzadik Amor, and then it could be that she's married. We don't know, maybe not. So it's, it's a doubtful Kiddushin. She'll, she will need a get for that. So we see from that, that, that there is no Benoni. If we're talking of either you complete Tzadik, if you are, um, if you do Tshuva, and, 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 and if, you, if you sin, and before you do Tshuva, you complete Russia. So where is a Benoni coming into the picture? And you may think maybe to be, um, to be a Benoni is someone who does a small Avera. So what is a small sin? What is a small sin? Maybe a small sin, maybe it means someone who just did a rabbinical provision. Or maybe someone who didn't protest. Now really, to <coughs> protest, Limchot, is a mitzvah of the Torah. that says, Ocheach tochiach et amitecha. But there is two types of, of, uh, of Ocheach tochiach et amitecha. One which is biblical and one which is a mitzvah, one is not a mitzvah. If you see someone committing a sin intentionally and you, and you don't stop, you don't uh, rebuke them for doing that, that's going against ochech to ochech tamitecha, it's a positive mitzvah in the Torah, that if you see a fellow Jew committing a sin intentionally, you should, st- you should tell them, to speak to them, try to influence them not to do it. But then what happens if you see someone committing a sin, doing something wrong unintentionally? So that's not included in Ocheach to Ocheach Tamitecha. That's already a different category. That it says in the Gemara that because Israel Arivim Zelazeh, we guarantors for each other, and we have the obligation to correct each other. So this is not part of this mitzvah. So maybe, it's, uh, and that this is basically going back to the uh, 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 big, the Cheta Ego, the sin of the golden calf. Not everybody was involved and everybody was punished because, and those who were involved, they may have made a mistake. It wasn't a mezid. Maybe it was shogeg by many of them. And everybody was involved, uh, was, was responsible because they didn't protest. And also, when we had the first Bet HaMikdash, Hashem at originally on, didn't only wanted to, to punish the Rashaim, and then the Gemara says that that was the only time that a good prophecy was changed. And, um, and over there also, because the, those who were righteous did not protest, or did not try to influence those who sinned. So, so maybe you would think to yourself that that defines a benoni. It's, I'm not a, a Rasha, I didn't do any Avera, I'm not Sadiq because I saw somebody doing something wrong and I didn't stop them. Maybe that's what makes a benoni an intermediary. And the last choice, so the, so, uh, so the, the Alter Rebbe says, no, it's not like that. Because if we look in the Halacha, it says, <laughs> Even someone who, who goes against a, a, a light provision of the rab, rabbis, Mikher Rasha is considered a Rasha. It says, <laughs> The second chapter of the first chapter of Nida. Even if somebody could, has the ability to, to protest, and he doesn't, there's a story of... Um, uh, it says that you're not supposed to protest if you know it's not going to make a difference. It says it's, it's, better, it's better, just like it's a mitzvah to say words are going to be heard, it's a mitzvah not to say the words are not going to be heard. That's the Ta'aloch and Shulchan Aruch. Sometimes we, we keep quiet. Um, so there was once a, a, a widow who owed a lot of money to the bank back in the days, and they... And, and the, the rabbi decided to go, and, and basically the rich man who was running this bank um, was very strict, and basically the rabbi decided to go, and, to go to his house. Nobody understood why he's going to his house. There's no chance of getting anything from this guy. He, wa- he knocked on the door, and, and, the, and this man was so excited. Wow, the rabbi came to visit me. And he comes in, and he offers him a cup of tea, whatever it was, and then finally he says, yes. So the rabbi keeps quiet. He doesn't say anything. He says, you came for something. He says, yeah, I came to do a mitzvah. He says, what kind of a mitzvah? He says, a mitzvah that, that just like the mitzvah to say words that are going to make a difference, that are going to influence the mitzvah, not to say words that are not going to influence. So I came to do a mitzvah to be quiet. <laughs> so he says, what is it? How do you know it's not going to make a difference? Maybe it will make a difference. He says, no, no, I know it's not going to make a difference. He says, how do you know? Finally, he, he told them. He said, there's this widow who was a lot of money to the bank and uh, her family... She has little children. She, she, what, I mean, it's a, it's a big problem. Like she needs help, 
And they start saying, well, I can't do anything about it. I'm just the banker. It's not my money. I can't, you know. And I said, I told you that it's not going to make a difference. <laughs> so, so, so then he said, okay, you know what? I'll see what I could do. And he took care of it. Um, so there is a mitzvah. Um, if you have the ability, this is what it says over here, somebody who can protest. In other words, sometimes you know it's not going to make a difference and it's better to be quiet. But if you know that it, you have the ability to influence um, and you didn't, like it says, um, this, this, the, the previous Rebbe said that the, the, the mitzvah protesting, so many people don't fulfill it right. Because people know, okay, the mitzvah to protest, to, to rebuke each other. Every time you see someone doing something wrong, you right away have to tell them off. Mm -hmm. But if, if, in the same place where it talks about the mitzvah of rebuking, first of all, it says, Ochech tochech et amitecha. And amitecha means someone who, amit in Hebrew means someone who is like on your level. If you telling off somebody else and you feel like, and you talk to them like they're below you, like you're talk, 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 talking down at them, First, besides the fact that you're not going to influence them that way, but it's, then you don't have the mitzvah. It's only if you're able to feel like you're talking to them with respect, like they're on your level. And at the same place, it talks about the mitzvah, I love you, fellow Jew. So we learn that the only time that you have this mitzvah, it's coming out of love. Because it says in the same place, love your fellow Jew and don't hate your fellow Jew. If you feel anger towards the other, or hatred because of what they did wrong, then, first of all, you have no mitzvah to rebuke them, and if you will rebuke them, it's not even going to help. So you're just going to... It says after, after that, Lotis Alafchet, that if you're rebuking in the wrong way, you're just embarrassing him, and you're just um, doing the opposite. So it's a very sensitive mitzvah that, that the previous rabbi said that many people use it in the wrong way, and unfortunately, and they damage more than... more than... Uh, it's more destructive than constructive. Okay, so it, 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 it's actually emphasized over here because it says, in the case that you have the ability to, to rebuke, you have the ability to protest like ch parents with their children, like we know Shmuel Hanavi was um, Elia Cohen, and I think, I think also Elia and Eli, they were, they were told off that they weren't strict enough with their children. I don't know about, Eli, about the Shmuel, but Elia Cohen definitely, and I think also King David in a way, that uh, all the mess that was with his children was because he wasn't strict enough with them. So obviously when you have children, you, obviously you love them, and, it's, and whatever you're going to tell them, I mean obviously if you're going to tell them in the right time, not right when you're angry, but you could, it's, you could definitely do it in the right way. And they know that you love them and you're able to do it right, and, and then you have the obligation to do it. So if a person has the ability to protest and he doesn't, so then he's called Russia. So then there's no such thing to be a Benoni. Because you're going to a and how much more so, how much more so if someone has the ability to do a positive mitzvah and he doesn't, come on, for example, if someone has the ability to study Torah, which is an ongoing mitzvah, and he doesn't, there is a very strong word of Chazal in the Talmud that if someone could learn Torah and he wastes his time, it's like he's disrespecting the word of Hashem. is like saying, I have something better to do. And, and, and obviously, someone who could do a positive, it's like studying Torah, and he doesn't, it's even worse than rabbinical prohibition. So if a, going against a rabbinical prohibition makes a person a rasha, definitely someone who has the ability to study Torah, and he doesn't, or any positive, and he doesn't, also that would define a person as a rasha. So the bottom line is, that we could conclude from all the above that someone is on the level of Benoni and Boafil Avon Torah. Even the sin of Bitu Torah he doesn't have. What does it mean even? In a way, Bitu Torah is something very severe. But there is a, a, a Gemara that says that there is three things that no one survives. Three negative things. Three Averot that nobody survives. The Gemara Babatri says like this, Iyun to, to, to daven with great concentration. Unfortunately, we all fail sometimes on doing this. And the second thing is iru um, avera, to have thoughts, to have thoughts that are inappropriate. That's also, nobody controls that. Nobody is able to be perfect on that. Um, and the third thing is avak lashonara. Lash the Gemara says, lashonara, no, 
The Gemara says, no, not Lashon Hara, Avak Lashon Hara. Avak Lashon Hara is a dust of Lashon Hara. Dust of, of negative talk. Which dust means when you don't realize, like for example, anybody knows the example of Avak Lashon Hara? When you're speaking positively about someone. Exactly, that's good. Right. You speak to, spies to somebody, next somebody who could be jealous of him, and you say, oh, what are you talking about? You, you, you start talking about it, the person's negative things. Or next to his enemy, for sure. So that could be a dust of Shonara, because you didn't say anything bad, but you caused bad language to be spoken. So, so these are the three things that it says in the Gemara that everybody fails. Okay? Now, it's not talking about Bitul Torah, but we could derive from it, when you speak Lashonara, obviously you're not speaking words of Torah. And actually, it's very interesting. What is Bitul Torah? Sometimes people think, well, if I say hi to my friend, it's Bitul Torah. So I shouldn't talk to anybody. So Bitul Torah, we don't say Bitul Limut Torah. Bitul Torah means that you are wasting, that you, that you are nullifying or the Torah. Which means, if you are doing a mitzvah, it's not Bitul Torah. Bitul Torah means that you are, that you are, Going, it basically means that you're not conducting your life according to Torah, okay? That you, if you are saying, if you are greeting somebody else, okay, for example, this is Kiyuma Torah, this is not Bitul Torah, okay? So, the Bitul Torah means when a person is able to learn, and he doesn't learn, and instead of learning, he's doing something that is absolutely a um, waste of time. So, Bitul Torah is, I mean... In a way, we could, we could do a lot of things that are not going to be carried with Torah, but we have to be very careful because we overdo it. Like even somebody, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to exercise for sure not, for sure not, but I'm saying even if, if someone does some kind of vacationing and things like that, that you think maybe it's with Torah, if this is, like we're actually going to learn about it in chapter 7, where the author brings stories from the Gemara, of great tzaddikim, like Rabbah, whenever he would say, Miltadibdichuta, whenever he would start learning with his, with, his, with his students, he would say a joke first. And you think, what's going on with this Rabbah? This, this is the God of Ador, and he would, it's Bitol Torah, he's saying a joke. <laughs> so it's true, it says that, but the great Torah scholars, even from their jokes, you could learn a lot of Torah. But it, <laughs> and he's talking about drinking wine, that uh, the, uh, 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 Rav Nachman, there's a story of Rav Nachman that, that he was struggling with a certain Gemara, a certain piece of learning, and then the next day he clarified it. And they said, what happened overnight? He said, I just had a great beef last night. So, so they said that the wine that I had and the chamra, uh, and the, the wine opened up my eyes or my, my, the, the beef I had. So we understand that, that, some, that enjoying the physical world doesn't necessarily have to con- contradict with the Torah and doesn't necessarily have to be Bitul Torah. But at the same time, we can't take advantage and say, you know, like, it's something like we spoke about before, that we always have to think twice, like we say, that uh, the kosher signs, there's two kosher signs, split hooves and chew its cud. And according to Kabbalah, what do these two kosher signs mean? It means that whenever we're, we're about to eat an animal, we're about, we've got to get involved in the physical world, eating meat. So we have to have two signs that we're doing the right thing whenever we get involved in physicality. The first thing is true it's cut. True it's cut means to redigest it. Even if at first glance we think we're doing the right thing, we have to be careful because we're no, in a world of a halem a world of concealment, and we could think that it's, that it's okay and maybe may not. We always have to chew it again, chew it over. And the second thing is split, split hooves. Split hooves means that the split hooves one goes to the right, one goes to the left, and we know according to Kabbalah, the right is chesed, left is gevura. So we have to judge if we're doing it because this is our nature or because this is the right thing. And we know the famous story with Avraham Avinu with the tenth challenge of Akedat Yitzchak. So the famous, there's a question, that was the tenth challenge. And we say that this challenge was the greatest one. Why was the tenth challenge the greatest challenge? And there's many, many answers. And in Hasidut as well. And one of the answers is that this was a test when he really went against his nature. Because Avram had the nature of Ahava, of Chesed, of, of kindness, of being merciful. And here, Hashem told him to slaughter the one that he loved so much, his only son that was born to him at, at his old age. That's really act of, of vura, of cruelty, in a sense. 
and he was able to, he was right to that. And that's why he said, that, Now I know that you, that you are Yira. Not only Ahava, you also have Yira, that you're really serving God. Um, you're, really, you're really committed to God, and, and you need Ahava, you have Ahava. You need Yira, you have Yira. You need, you need right wing, left wing, you have both. Because it's not about your ego. And this is what we're going to study, Mr. Shem will get there, that this is a way to judge if it's coming out of your ego or not. If, it's, if you're only going in the path of your, of your nature, then something is wrong. If there is some people who, by nature, are very caring and very loving and very merciful, and they could be giving a lot of tzedakah, and it's great, but but to be a real obed Hashem, service of servant of God, you have to see that you're able to go the other direction as well. You're able to be in the in the, in, the, in that's because you know everybody has their challenge. Some people have a challenge to give. They're more they like to be disciplined, and they like to. And they like, they love Shulchan Aruch. And it tells them exactly what to do, uh, how much and how when and what time to wake up, when to go to sleep and what is it. They love it. And there's some people who are more, you know, um, I don't know what's the word for it, more uh, open and more easygoing. And they love more, and they and for them, that's a struggle to, to have all these instructions and halacha and all these uh, details. And, you know, they, like, they want to be able to talk anytime in davening and, you know, like things like that. It's like to be easy going. But then when it comes to tzedakah, they have no problem to give and to, to be nice. To be... So everybody has this struggle. And we have to split hooves means that in order to know that we're doing something kosher, that we are in a kosher direction, is to be able to, to go wherever it's necessary. Chesed or Gevura. And like the Ramban writes, that it's impossible to have that only in Avodat Hashem. In the world, a person who has chesed, who is, who is in the mode of chesed, it's hard for him to change the word. It's not possible to... Either a person is, has, is, is on the line of, of chesed, is like uh, open and outgoing, or gevura, or is like strict and whatever, like in the, lane, in the left or right. But only in Avodah Hashem we have the ability, because we're talking with, with a godly soul that is infinite, and here we could have the both, like Avram did. Like we could, we could have both... Ava Tashem, any Rat Hashem, which. What's, what's, what are we doing with time? It's five to nine. Five to nine, okay. Mm-hmm. you have any questions? or? Did you, I mean, when you said Chesed, the Gvora in the split of which was left and which was right? Chesed is right okay. and Gvora is left. Yeah. Okay. Just to conclude, oh, I'm sorry, you said. <laughs> no, just to conclude, so what we're, we're, what we're saying right now is that in the Gemara, when we say tzaddik or rasha, it's different than in the medrash or agada of the Gemara. Halachically speaking, um, someone who is um, to be called a tzaddik, the, the halacha is, like it says, there is a Gemara saying, en la dayan al avrot, that a judge could just based on what his eyes see. Halacha is based, is more, is, is about external. When in halacha, in, in the, in the, it's, we call someone a tzaddik, it means in his behavior as a tzaddik. Like for example, we said someone is, uh, who did tshuva is already called a tzaddik. Why is he called a tzaddik? He still has a yetzahara. Because we're not talking about what's going on inside. We're talking about in your behavior. The moment you did tshuva and you're in your mind, you're, you're going to control all of your desires, inclinations, and, 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 and temptations, you're already called a tzaddik. Okay? Um, that's in halacha. Also, we're going to learn next week, hopefully, that... Um, that also on Rosh Hashanah, when we say a tzaddik, it's like when you have a court case and, and you're, you're judging about a certain case and you're saying this guy in, in, in um, I don't know if you said in English, but in, in Hebrew, when someone is, 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 um, comes out to be a zakai, you could say zakai or tzaddik, righteous. Tzaddik bedino. So when we say he's righteous in the judgment, doesn't mean that he's righteous in everything he did in his life. In this case, he came out the righteous one, and the other guy became the wicked one. So this is not. This is another way to say a tzaddik. A tzaddik means on Rosh Hashanah when Hashem on Rosh Hashanah Hashem judges us on the scale, and if we have majority merits, and we discussed the other day that merits doesn't mean quantity, it means quality. Sometimes you could do one mitzvah and put so much effort, it could be weighing a lot. And sometimes sins that we do, like Rabbi Levitzel Gabardichov said, 
that we says that we never that it says that every time you do a mitzvah you're creating a good angel, you create a vera, you create a bad angel, and those these guys go on the scale on Rosh Hashanah. So the Rabbi Levitz, like I said, he never saw an angel that was created from a, from a sin of a Jew that was a hundred percent that was that was a hundred percent that didn't have any blemishes. He says one one angel is missing a heart, one is missing a head, because even when a Jew sins. He doesn't feel so good about it, and he, it's missing something. This, it's not a healthy angel. The bad angels are not 100% healthy. They don't, they don't have all their organs. Something is, is it's not perfect. <laughs> so anyway, so even when a person sins, a lot of times there's a lot of pressures and a lot of... And it's not done like Le Teavon, like the famous story of this rabbi who, who came on, on, on uh, Tisha B'Av. No, Yom Kippur. Oh, it was Tisha B'Av. They saw the guy eating... Uh, eating Dovar uh, Acher. Yeah, he said a nice word. White uh, what? White <laughs> Anyways, it was, and, and he said to him, Le Teavon. Uh, you should, uh, uh, what is it, good appetite? Or, uh, whatever. So he, he's, he didn't understand. He says, because w- there's two levels of a sin. One is called Chet, one is called Pesha. Uh, one is called Avon, one is called Pesha. Avon is Mezid, when you do it intentionally, but you do it because you're you have a big temptation, you can't control yourself. And, and Pesha means to rebel, Achis, like you want to get God angry. So of course we know that Pshaim is the Meradim, is, 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 is rebellious, that's the worst. Because when a person has a Yetzirah, has temptations, it's hard always to control. And Hashem is considering it. But when a person is just doing it to get God angry, that's really, there's no excuse for it. So he gave him a wish that you, he said you should be, it should be for good appetite, you should let have on, it should be because you're desiring it, and that's what you're eating, and you're not just trying to do the wrong thing. So, um, so that's what I'm saying, that sometimes we do a vera, and because we had a big challenge, it's not like it's weighs so much, and our mitzvot could weigh a lot. So the way we're judged on Yerush Hashanah Yom Kippur is not, it's not necessarily the way we see it. Like we could see someone who is very not religious, think, oh, how could he pass the judgment? But someone who's not, it says in the Gemara that someone, that something called Kotinokot Shenishbu, children who were raised in captivity, which means they, were, they didn't know they're Jewish, it says that they're called Anusim. They're, um, it's unavoidable. It's, it's, their sins are unavoidable because they never learned about it. And it could be someone who's not brought up religious, he doesn't really understand the meaning and the, and the importance of Torah Mitzvot, so it's called Ones. So, one person like that, when whatever he does wrong in his life, right? In, in, in I mean, in, from the perspective of Torah Mitzvot, is not really so severe because he was never raised that way. And however, when he does one mitzvah, that mitzvah could be weighing so much because it's un- unbelievable that a person like that comes to show Yom Kippur. So we don't understand, and we have to be melamed but we don't understand how Hashem is weighing the mitzvot and avirot. Like the Gemara says that. For ignorant Jews, their sins are of mezid, are intentional, are considered unintentional. And for the Tamil Chachamim, their shogeg, their unintentional, is like intentional. So, we don't understand. So, when we say in Rosh Hashanah, Tzadik, it means that he, he, by him, he tipped the scale. So, it's not means that he's a Tzadik within. It means either on the, with regards to the genre of Rosh Hashanah, or what we say about Tzadik Amor, that with regards to his... his um, his uh, mindset right now is that Sadiq, he did Shuba, he's not going to sin. But when we're talking in the Medrash, the Medrash of the Gemara is already Kabbalah. It's already the, the, the Pnimuta Torah. It's already the, the deeper way of looking at a Jew. That's the Medrash and the Zohar. And when you look at the Medrash and the Zohar, we understand that a Sadiq, when we say a Sadiq, it's already not just external, it's already something deeper. It means that you already reach a level of, 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 uh, of transforming your Tzahara like David Hamel.